In 1975, Ted and his young family step foot on American soil without a penny to their name. Fast forward 10 years later, and they're living their best lives as millionaires. But it wasn't to stay that way for long. An inner monster took over Ted and derailed the operation. In this video, we're covering the real-life story of Ted Noy, refugee-turned-self-made millionaire who for years battled demons to keep his empire of donuts. A real-life tale of when gambling goes horribly wrong. So, if you enjoy fascinating stories about real people who seemingly have everything, only to lose it all due to gambling, then grab a coffee, sit back and join us as we discuss the story of Ted Noy, the Donut King. Ted was born Buntek Ted in 1942 in Sisyphon, a Cambodian village close to the border of Thailand. His Chinese mother could only speak Chinese, and she raised Ted single-handedly. Life was pretty uneventful on the whole for Ted, until 1967 when he was sent away to high school in the capital Phnom Penh. It was here where he would first set eyes on a girl called Suganthini Cohen, who just happened to be the daughter of a high-ranking government official. It was love at first sight, but as a poor half-Chinese boy from a small village, he didn't think he stood a chance, not only because she was heavily chaperoned everywhere where she went, but because all of the boys were also in love with her. But luck was on his side. He quickly realized that his lodgings overlooked Suganthini's villa, so seizing the opportunity, he opened his window, sat on the ledge, and played the flute. He did this every evening, and incredibly, she sent him a message, completely enthralled by his flute playing. Long story short, they fell in love and got married. Life was good for Ted. He was starting a family with his beautiful wife and worked a variety of jobs over the next few years, including as a tour guide and a travel agent. Then in 1970, he was accepted into the military. This was the same year that civil war broke out between the government and the infamous Pol Pot, the leader of the communist Khmer Rouge. It helped that his brother-in-law was chief of police, so a few strings were pulled and Ted was promoted instantly to the rank of major before being stationed at the Cambodian embassy in Thailand, appointed as a military diplomat. Even so, Ted would travel back to Cambodia once a month to collect his soldiers' wages. But then, in 1975, Terror struck when the Khmer Rouge won the Cambodian War, capturing the capital and overthrowing the Khmer Republic. The capital had fallen, and it had to happen during one of Ted's monthly trips. Thankfully, he was able to escape on one of the last flights out of Phnom Penh, but not everyone was so lucky. Sadly, his wife's parents were among the first to meet their end, being brutally executed by the regime. Ted, Suganthini, and their children sold all of their belongings and fled under refugee status on one of the first flights to Camp Pendleton, a US military base located in Southern California. But starting a new life wasn't so simple. To be able to leave the camp and find work, they had to be sponsored by an American who would assist them with finding employment and somewhere to live. The camp slowly started to empty as other families families found sponsors and left, and then one day, that day came for them too, when they were sponsored by a pastor from Tustin, Orange County. Ted began working as a janitor at a church in Tustin, but quickly realized he wouldn't be able to support his family with the measly $500 a month that it provided. So he got a second job as a salesperson and a third job working nights as a petrol attendant in a gas station. Poor Ted must have been exhausted, but it would be worth it, at least initially. One day, not long after he started working at the gas station, Ted smelled something delicious wafting through the air – donuts. Next door was a donut shop called DK Donuts, and Ted absolutely had to try one. He remembers that day well. It reminded him of a type of donut-shaped fried pastry from back home in Cambodia called Nom Kong, and he instantly felt homesick. Nevertheless, he continued to watch this donut shop with great interest when he was filling up cars on the gas station forecourt. He'd watch people buying donuts and coffee all night long, when one day, he had a light bulb moment. This was was good business. He had no more than $3,000 to his name and asked a saleswoman in DK Donuts if this was enough to open a donut shop. It was bad news, but she did recommend that instead he should enroll on a training program that was run by the donut chain. As their first Southeast Asian trainee and with very little English, Ted would learn everything about the business in three short months of training, including how to bake, do payroll, clean, and sales. 
Then the donut chain, Winchells, were aiming to increase minority hiring at the time and gave him the responsibility of running a donut shop on Balboa Pier, not too far from Tustin. There he would employ his wife and nephew. In 1977, he had finally saved enough money to buy his very own donut shop in La Abra, Christie's Donuts which suddenly became incredibly popular under his ownership. Ted's empire grew. After a year of running the two shops, they had saved another $40,000 and decided it was time to expand again. They went on to purchase several more donut shops in Orange County, but it was exhausting trying to manage all of the business on their own. So Ted decided to give back to his community, who had also fled Pol Pot's regime, training and leasing the shops to Cambodian relatives and employing refugees that he had sponsored. He and his wife sponsored more than 100 families in all, with Ted stating that everybody needs a chance to survive. So he sponsored as many as he could who would affectionately refer to him as Uncle Ted. By the mid-80s, Ted had become known as the Donut King, as he had opened more than 50 donut shops and made millions of dollars through his ever-growing donut empire. He and his wife had become American citizens, changing their names to Ted and Christy, and were enjoying a lavish lifestyle complete with a million-dollar home with a pool, vacation home, flash cars, and regular vacations abroad. He had done it. He he was living the American dream. Officially a self-made millionaire, Ted even got involved in politics and joined the Republican Party. He was an inspiration to other Cambodian immigrants who would try to imitate his business model to achieve their own dreams, and it seemed that nothing could go wrong for the Donut King. Until it did. And what was the undoing of it all? Gambling. It started innocently enough. In fact, everything was fine the first few times he visited Las Vegas on vacation. He and Christy enjoyed dinners, watched magic shows, and even watched Elvis perform. Ted had never gambled in his life, but one day, he got caught up in the excitement and decided to have a go on the blackjack tables. It didn't take long for the adrenaline, the thrill, and the glamour of it all to get to him, and suddenly, Ted was hooked. It became a habit. It got so bad that he started to neglect his family and all of his businesses to disappear for days on end. He was always in Las Vegas, where he would often lose to the casino spectacularly. Sometimes he was losing $5,000, $7,000 per game, hiding from his wife behind slot machines when she came to the casinos looking for him. He became angry and would lash out when he would lose, scaring his kids by breaking furniture. He would borrow money from the very people he had leased his shops to, before returning again and again to the casinos, trying to recover what he'd lost. He recognized that he was in serious trouble, so he joined Gamblers Anonymous, which did little to curb his habit. He would attend the meetings, participate and cry, and go straight back to the tables when he was done. He couldn't escape. He was desperate to give up his addiction, going so far as to join a Buddhist monastery twice, shaving his head and traveling barefoot through Thailand in a bid to return to the states cured and changed for the better. But nope, just a few weeks later, he was back in the casino. Things just went from bad to worse. He'd lost all of his businesses, and the last remaining shop was to be sold because the family desperately needed the money. But after the sale, as they were driving home with $85,000 in the trunk, they were stopped by police, as they had fallen behind on car payments and it was coming up as stolen. They were taken to the police station, and when they were finally released, the money was nowhere to be found. The millions were gone, the businesses were gone. So Ted and Christy moved back to Cambodia in 1993, where they were at least able to live a comfortable life with the money they had left over. Ted decided to get into Cambodian politics, but for that, he would have to give up gambling for good. So he did. He formed his own political party, but in the end, he didn't win a seat in the elections. Meanwhile, Christy had gone back to the US to visit family, but during this time, Ted got himself involved in an affair, which unfortunately led to the end of Ted and Christy, as not long after, she filed for divorce. He was now broke and disgraced. He had lost everyone's respect, and he describes it as the lowest point in his life, even contemplating suicide. He became deeply religious, 
and moved to Thailand, completely penniless. But he would get a second chance at success. He managed to land a contract assisting with real estate deals and managed to get himself back to millionaire status, remarrying and having four more kids. He was later able to mend relationships that had been severed during a visit back to California for a documentary film about himself. This is a story about a man who came from nothing but managed to make his dreams come true by hustling and working hard, which ultimately led to his demise and left him broken with nothing. It's also a story about how anyone can achieve anything if they work hard enough and what can happen when refugees are given the opportunity to thrive. So that's going to do it for today's video. If you've enjoyed yourself, then make sure you check out the other videos on our channel and we'll see you over there.